Hello everyone, it's time for This Week in Keyboards, and we have quite a bit of news this episode. We have a handful of full-length topics and so many rapid-fire topics, I might need to switch to a belt-fed finger gun instead of my normal pew-pews. Well, let's start the news with some key sets. Specifically, let's talk about the key sets that moved me the most this month. Starting off, we have Jim K Beta by Heinebush, Krelbit, and Oblotsky. Wow, what a power trio. What happens when you take a Betamax cassette tape sleeve and convert it into keyboard form? You get Jim K Beta. But perhaps more intriguing is the JS Bass Kit, which emulates the Just Systems High Pro keycaps that many yearn for. Either Bass Kit's gonna cost you 138 over at switchmod.net, and the group I will be running until the 21st of this month. Am I gonna get the set? Of course I'm gonna get that JS bass. Absolutely the bee's knees. I mean, the beta bass is decent as well, but that JS bass, moi, B-E-A, beautiful. This is definitely my key, key sets to buy for the month of September. Personally, this is a buy the key set first, pick the keyboard later, kind of set for me. Check it out over on switchmod.net. Moving right along, we have GMK Monokai Material by Oblotsky. This set's gonna be running until October 4th, and it's gonna cost you $135 over on Novel Keys. This set is inspired by the titular IDE theme Monokai. You probably want this set if you like having a plain but cool set flanked on the sides by some nicely colored legends on those modifiers. I've always felt that IDE themes are easy targets for key set design since they are colored and supposed to have identifiable characteristics for coding and typing and vim and I don't, I don't understand that kind of stuff but it's that stuff coding i think this set would look pretty decent on a dark board to really let those modifiers shine if i go ahead and sell more than one keyboard this month i'd be tempted to pick this set up as set number two for september but i'll have to give it a hard think if the result of your hard think is to buy it novel keys before october 4th Next up for key sets is GMK Slasher by Dale X Snail or Dale Snail. Specifically, this set was co-designed by the Keen team, K-I-I-N, of Uliam, Dale Snail, and Perkins. GMK Slasher is inspired by 80s slasher movies, hence the blood red on dark aesthetic and the very fun novelties. While I'm not the biggest 80s slasher movie fan in the world, I do appreciate the set's use of dark and dark gray and black with those red legends. This is a set I'll keep my eye on. I feel like a lot of sets that feature red try to make it, try to make the red absolutely blinding in one way or another, or just way too loud in general. I'm hoping the red used for Slasher won't be too loud and well, Dale, you got my attention. Let's see if you'll claim my wallet. Next up is Jim K Noir by Gasp of Apiary Keyboards. From full-time keyboard building and content making, Gasp is expanding her reach and involvement in the community by bringing us Jim K Noir, a set that is meant to make plain boards look amazing without just being a simple black on white sets. Well, the presentation to fix that is Jim K Noir, and honestly, I think so far, so good. The base kit has everything I care about, and the colors look decent. I certainly think they'd look great on quite a bit of, as Gas would say, plain keyboards. I usually don't mention desk mats too much when it comes to sets that feature them, but I'm really liking them for this set. The set's gonna be available from various vendors when it goes live October 4th, and knowing Gasp's pretty large reach into the community and being able to be involved in the community full time, I have no doubts that the set's gonna be fine. It's in good hands, Gasp is great. Getting away from GMK, our next topic is Burger Works's, or Booger Works' CRP C64 set. Booger was invited by Hammerworks to design a CRP set, and this is a result. Essentially, it's a modernized and colorized Commodore 64 styled set. Personally, my only complaint is that they used for the modifier legends, lowercase instead of all capitalized like the OG. But I guess lowercase everything is more modern these days. Also, there will be a B-Box 60 kit, which is a case that you can assemble. It's supposed to go with the set. I don't really care. In my opinion, it's way less exciting than the set itself. Because you got the standard boring alphas and you got those C64 alphas and various kits to fill out your keyboard as needed. Will I get this set? Maybe. Half of me likes the inspiration and the other half think it's too modern of a take, but that's not necessarily a horrible thing. Definitely gonna have a think on it when the group buy comes around. Last for the full topic key sets is EPBT e Scatty by Sifo. 
The set is inspired by Type Moon's Fate version of the Norse Winter Goddess Skadi, which may take some liberties on Skadi, you know, the Dark Goddess. So that means instead of going with the original representation of being a white-robed goddess of winter, hunting, skiing, revenge, knowledge, justice, independence, and mountains, Sifo is going fully with the waifu version. <laughs> with this theme in mind, there will be runic legends designed by Ulium for the set, which obviously it works quite well considering the inspiration, and it also works well by adding another accent color, but subtly, to the set. If you haven't had enough purple yet, here's another purple set for you, and you know what? I think it might work pretty well with the Crown TKL that I just built. Hmm. Base kit is going to be around 120 Canadian or 92 Freedom Dollars, and it's priced this way because in a weird turn of events, the North American proxy isn't any of the usual suspects in the US. Instead, it's going to be up in Canada, aka where they have pretty good maple syrup. The group buy goes live in October. Next, let's change things up with some keyboards instead of some key sets. Specifically, the keyboards that caught my eye in one way or another. Starting off, we have the B Mech by Joes. The B Mech stands for the B Meyer Ergonomic Keyboard. Originally a DIY project that Joes started in 2019, this board is now a real thing. The group buy is going to be a raffle for 50 total spots. So, how much is this board and what does it offer? Well, for 299 euros, you get the case, plate, all your standard hardware, copper bottom weight, PCB, this is the standard, you know, what you're expecting to get. The plate though, top mounted, typing angle, six degrees, center clusters rotated inward, 10 degrees for typing comfort. There is a flex plate option, which looks quite attractive and I think that would be the move if you end up winning the raffle. Layout wise, I have no real complaints as it looks mostly fine in my eyes. Part of me wishes it was cleaned up a tiny bit by not having that nav, those nav keys on the side. That's no biggie, no biggie at all. What's a bigger deal for me is that removable blocker which exists depending on which bottom row option you go for for the right side of the split. I'd say no matter how you build this up, just build it up where you don't have a removable blocker on your board. I do like these six optional LED indicators on the uh, the bottom front, um, bottom top I mean. Sorry, I just had to swat a piece of dog hair out of the air. Um, but overall, it's gonna be a hot swap option, solder bowl option, great choices for the community. It's gonna be in black, anthracite, gray, dark blue, dark purple, um, yeah. Or you can just have the aluminum just pure bead blasted, no anno if you wanna take it to your own anodizer, powder coater, Cerakoter, whatever finish you want on aluminum. So will you be in it to win it this Sunday for the raffle? A large part of me wants to at least try, but I don't know if it's in the budget for this month personally. Good luck to everyone entering the raffle. Next is the OBJ140 by Lucique 2 and Co, AKA Flawless. It's a TKL made of aluminum with a half plate, thin 1.2 millimeter PCB, six degree typing angle, available in just black or silver. What's exciting is possibly the option for a polypropylene plate, which could end up being an extremely flexy typing experience. I know super flexy plates and PCBs can be hit or miss for many folks. It's a hit for me. It certainly can be quite interesting and I'm waiting for them to flesh out more details, like the logo, is it gonna be bigger, obnoxious, or small and subdued? Unit quantity, price, vendors, and there's even gonna be some future case changes that kind of haven't been finalized yet. It's still overall, I think gonna be a clean looking TKL that many people are gonna be looking forward to. Only odd thing is no Heine PCB, but they have their own PCB and well, I guess as long as it works. Moving along, we have the Pandora 60% by Kubitschek. This is certainly quite the board a lot of people have been looking forward to. Let's go over all the specs, bits, pieces of this board that's attracting quite a bit of attention right now. So the Pandora is a 60% that features the MX, HHKB, standard ANSI, or wind keyless top pieces, and support for a 10U spacebar if you're crazy about that. USB-C daughter board, USB 2.0 hub, rotary encoder knob on the back of the board, a steep 9.5 typing angle. Um, let's see, aluminum or polycarb case, gasket mounted with 12 different gaskets, uh, plates available in aluminum, brass, steel, palm, polycarb, FR4, titanium in either half or full plate for all of those, flex cuts on the PCB for the end half plates, RGB underglow, uh, there's a lot of things going on. The bottom has a very unique design with a very unique cool weight. It's got that accent stripe around the board. It's got the badge in the corner. It's got a lot of things going on. 
And with all of this in mind, first come, first serve this Saturday, 50 special edition units, 150 to 300 total units available. And if the current pricing on the website is correct, you're looking at paying around 600 plus dollars for the Pandora 60%. Is it worth $600? I don't know. Unfortunately, it's not in my budget for sure to find out personally, but I definitely see why many would find hype in this board in both how it looks and what it offers. So I salute you all who are preparing your alarm clocks and calendars to win that first come first serve. Well, that's it for the primary topics this week. And wowie, that took, that took a cool minute. But hey, you know what time it is? It's time for the rapid fire. Okay, let's make this fast, let's make this easy. First, we have the Fresta Experimental, which is actually a pretty attractive numpad, O-ring, gasket mounted, top mounted, or tray mounted, you got options, crazy. If it's not too expensive, I'll probably buy one. EPBT Night Market. Thai Alphas are the coolest part of the set by far. The rest, eh. S7.7, a macro pad by Velocifier that requires a that features a top blocker. I guess if you missed out on Simon's IS-0, here's a macro pad where you can find a place for your ISO enter. Cat Autumn. Funny story. On Tinder, I recently matched with a woman named Autumn, and I was gonna say some crass line about, you know, how the seasons are changing and I wanna get inside Autumn already. But now that I said that out loud, I probably shouldn't send her that message. Well, this little off topic was definitely more exciting than the Cat Autumn set, so you get that instead. Pinnacle 65, literally a joke, but one that's pretty on point. After this video, click the link and just read through all of OP's post on the pages of, of, of the interest. It's A plus, A plus. Clap 65%. I don't like that side badge blocker. Also, this is from Clap Studio, and this is what I believe is their first board that I know of. So you get to tell people, I got the clap if you get this board. Next row on Pac-Man 86 is the Marissi Sesantaksinki. What? I don't care. I butchered the pronunciation. Probably. I did. 65% board. Simple aesthetics. Depending on the details and how they develop, maybe when it goes to group I, it might make it into a main topic of the show. When it makes it to the group I phase, we'll just have to wait and see. SA Magica. Imagine having a render with the superior purple modifiers, but not having that as a kit option at the moment. Caps Unlock is now bringing us a Duroc JWK Linear with 45 gram actuation and 55 gram bottom mount. Ultimately, a recolor with a lighter spring, and we don't even know if the color is cool yet. I feel like they skipped the most obvious part. Gotta be a cool color for people to even care. Next, we have the, the M1 Lifting Keyboard features electronic tilting controls, full metal keycaps, but hey, you know, cheapo zinc keycaps are technically all metal, so we'll just have to wait and see. GMK JIS, not GMK Jizz, is for people who want a fully functional Japanese kit for their keyboard. I don't know how much to sell, but is it really feasible to get molds for a low selling set? Probably not. Cat Super User. It's like a worse version of The Matrix. I mean like worse than the second movie. Essay Recall. Wow, designers have evolved from stripes to weird swooshes. Can we recall this idea? Cat Napoleonic, a set with too many kits. No, I mean like it has way too many kits. 21 different base alpha kits, five core modifier kits. Napoleon didn't even have this much support with his continental system. GMK Inukuma. Honestly, it's not a great start for an IC when you open it and you see desk mats before renders of the set. <sighs> but the all cream version does look like the better of the two. Hub 16 macro pad, four port USB 2.0 with C connectors, two knobs, 16 keys. That's a lot of money to spend on a crappy hub. I'd rather not have the hub and have a cheaper macro pad. Plexus 75%, a very big plunk. Basically a 60% ortholinear. GMK Space Cadet 2, I know you want it, be patient and it will run. SA Espresso, here we go. I thought we were missing something. Here's our gradient set of the episode. Honestly, it's not the worst gradient set I've seen, but hey, gradient and SA, hard pass, very hard pass. GMK Grove Box, inspired by the Grove Box color scheme for Vim. Dark alphas would be the move for this set, not the lighter alphas, that's weird, that's, that's weird. It's like a bad dolch, it's dark alphas. 
GMK comic. A lot of red. It's a bad sign for me when the desk mats are way cooler than the set. GMK Red Devils. Remember what I was saying earlier about having a set with reds being too loud? This is a set where the red is just too loud. The renders are screaming red at me. The Hangul sub-legends are, are a nice touch though. I, I, I like that. Time 80 Reforged. When you want a non-functional clock accent on the bottom of your keyboard that you only get to see when you flex it to others. I mean, people liked it though, so it's probably gonna be fun. I mean, Hugo chose it for his keyboard of the month, so. Then again, I think this says more about Hugo. Cat Monochrome. It's cat, it's monochrome. It has a lot of kits, nothing else to say. GMK Posh. Looks like what a chav would think posh is, but honestly, I don't think the base kit is actually that bad in terms of looks. It doesn't, it just doesn't seem what I would think posh is, but maybe I just don't know what posh is. GMK Sloth. It's on Novel Keys. It's a pale, slothy set. Buy it, or don't. I don't know. I'm not the boss of you. Desk Mats by Last Padawan. It's gonna be multiple times of this, I'm sure. As Picture, Group by, right now. 8008 Inks, an ink recolor to match your 8008 set. Features a gat yellow spring, opaque housing. Nice. Here's my promo code. Monster Desk Mats. More Desk Mats as pictured. $25 a pop. EPBT 6085. Simple and old school, inspired by the Xerox 6085. Novelties, I think. Pretty cool. A simple and boring set, but boring in a good way. Monochrome Desk Mats. Also $25 a pop when they run later this month. As pictured. Operator Split Ortho. Actually something on the unique side with having slider, knobs, and even a trackball. I could actually see myself getting this for photo or video editing, but I know I won't. I know I won't. I'd consider it, but I wouldn't. Mono Desk Mats. As pictured. Skog Reboot. Actually a worthwhile board to get rebooted refreshed, a trend I'd like to see more often. I don't know why people still want to add knobs to things, but the rest of the considerations like adjustable typing angle and gasket mounting are modern and probably more welcome than, than a knob. The Fockery 82. It's like a Fox Labs orange TKL and the CA66 had a baby in Chernobyl. Cam Playground. Beeps added again with his novelties. I just think he started working on novelties and then he just didn't stop. And then he took a step further by just making every key a novelty and just calling it a set. But if you like beep, you know what you're in for. Swiss 60%, a, uh, it's a keyboard that looks like cheese. I mean, that's it. I hope you don't have trypophobia. Well, that's it for this week in keyboards. I think I should never cover desk mats again. If you agree with me, let me know. Or if you disagree with me, let me know as well. Also, let me know if any of the news in this episode excites you. Does it move you? Are you gonna join any group eyes this month or are you lying low and waiting? Thank you everyone for getting through this lengthy episode of This Week in Keyboards and uh, it was a long one. But was it worth it? I don't know. What do you guys think? Twice an episode every other week or an episode every week that's slightly shorter? Mm, it's hard to say. Right now I'm kind of leaning toward an episode every other week and having other content in the weeks in between like streams, reviews, and other videos. Let me know what you think on different formats for the show, whether it's going to be weekly or bi-weekly. But thank you everyone so much for watching and don't forget, keep on keyboarding. Taking it too long this time. We're done.